Amazon meta or steel deals? Um, still, you know, is meta as much as steel deals as it was last year? No, but is it still on its way to 300, then 400 and 500? Yes. Amazon um, is a steel deal this year as well, right? And those companies are going to see some of the biggest ramp ups in net income and earnings per share over this next four to six quarters that you've ever seen from those companies ever in their histories. It's going to be incredible because all the cost cutting measures they, that are basically been going through and are still going through for those uh, companies specifically. Apples and Microsofts, you know, I, I wouldn't expect a huge move up. But the thing you got to understand, and this is so important, is when it comes to these sorts of companies, they have massive forced buying pressure pretty much consistently week after week after week after week. And that's because people basically have a portion of their, their check going to the S&P 500 almost all the time. And if you have a portion of your check, you know, each week you get paid or whatever, or if you have a business and you're doing that, whatever, a ton of that money is going to funnel to the top because those are the biggest weights, okay? So Microsoft, uh, Apple, Meta, all these big dog companies, NVIDIA, whatever, they're always going to have this forced, like, massive money coming in. Never mind that. You look at the Qs, the QQQ, it's even a bigger weighting. For, so those people are putting even more money into these sorts of big dog stocks. And so you just always have this massive forced buying of billions and billions and billions of dollars consistently, right? Never mind that. You obviously have almost all those companies do big buybacks as well, and that just adds another element on top of it. I mean, are there going to be some jobs that sh are eliminated from AI? Sure. Um, are their companies going to be much more profitable and able to do a lot more things a lot better, right? Uh, that's going to allow them to actually invest more into whether AI technologies or, or employees or whatever they want to do, right? Yes. Um, and it's going to allow them to expand more, right? If my company can be much more efficient, I can then invest that money in other projects and do other things with it, right? Rather than if you aren't making a good profit, you, you you can't do that, right? The only way to grow as a business is, well, one, you can take out debt, but the other is obviously profit. Like the main way to, to build a business is profit. And the more profit you make, the more products and services you can come out with in the future that can hopefully make you more profit, right? The more employees you can, you can hire and just continue to build your business. So I think that's huge. And obviously efficiency is going to be massive as well. So uh, yeah, those are all important subjects. Yeah, I still don't trust those home builders, man. I still, I don't trust them. Um, you know, and then when I say don't trust them, it doesn't mean the stocks are going to do bad or they're all going to crash. It's just I don't trust the move they've had, and uh, I still see their backlogs decreasing in a pretty epic way. And, you know, until you get really confirmation that the backlogs start to build, I don't think you can feel comfortable in those home builders. And I don't know when their backlogs start to build again, but it could be quite some time, folks. And so uh, that's one that I'm just like, eh, you know. I'd much, I feel much more comfortable buying Meta right now or Amazon or stocks like that, Palantir, um, than buying those home builders right now. That's my perspective on that. NVIDIA now at this point in time is 300 plus dollars a share. It just cracked 300, right? This is a stock that was selling for $110 in the fourth quarter of 2022. And here we are a few quarters later, and it's now 300 plus dollars, right? And, you know, this has cracked me up. It's been really interesting because I've watched so many bears short sellers try to short the stock and buy put options on the stock for month after month after month after month as the stocks climbed right not realizing like what they're betting against like, like think about this you're betting against jensen who's led this company forever and um since this company went public the stock price is up seventy six thousand percent under jensen's leadership right do you really want to bet against a guy like that like do you really want to bet against him and the team he's built at NVIDIA, right? This isn't even a stock I'm personally in, but I'm just like, I, I understand like the team that man has and I understand the abilities he has to lead that company and just like, would you really want to bet against that? And now they're selling these AI chips for 10,000, 20,000, $30,000. You gotta be flipping my flapjacks, man. And people want to actively bet against a stock like that. Like, what for, man? What for? Like, there's just so many opportunities in the market all the time to bet against Jensen and that team. It's just, it's, it, it, I'm like, of the opportunities you got in the market, what is worth it, man? Come on now, okay? AMD is back over $100. Now, here's what's really fascinating. Fascinating with AMD, right? This is a stock 
it's almost doubled up. So it hasn't performed nearly as much as NVIDIA has performed because NVIDIA is seen as kind of the forefront of AI technology in terms of AI chips. And it seemed like it seems like AMD is playing a little bit of catch up there. We'll see what plays out over obviously over the next few years, but that's the way it seems. And so I believe that's why AMD hasn't performed as well as NVIDIA. AMD still performed amazing. It just hasn't performed as well. But this is another one. Do you really want to bet against Lisa and what she's built there? Like, you can do that. Remember, shortly after she came over as CEO of this company, it was a it was a $2 stock. It was under $2. I remember looking at AMD stock under $2 a share. That was like 2015, 2016 kind of time frame there, right? And look what she's done with the companies. Look what the revenues are to nowadays. Look what the net income is, the EPS is. Look what the stock price is. Look what the products they have there. And it's just like, you know, these are sorts of, of silly pricing we got in 2022 thrown at us. And you had to take advantage, man. And there was just there was a lot of these tech-related names that were just thrown out there as steel deals. This year in 2023, it's not nearly as many of the tech stocks or like steel deals, although there are still deals. They're just not, I call it steel deals, easy money deals. There's a lot of other stocks in other industries now at this point in time that have that are basically what doing what tech stocks did last year. Okay. There's something interesting that happened on Fubo's earnings call that I want to drive your guys' attention to. Very, very interesting, okay? And I was listening to this last night while I was laying in bed, and um, I thought I would show you guys this, okay? This is actually from their call transcript, which Seeking Alpha actually puts pretty much every single public company's uh, earnings call into a transcript, and they put it on their, their site. By the way, if you want access to Seeking Alpha, check out the link that I have in the description area, because that's back when I did a deal with Seeking Alpha like a couple months ago, and I don't think they ever changed... I don't think they ever changed the pricing structure of that. So I think it's still like the discount deal. So anyways, if you're interested in that, it's in the description area, okay? But in regards to Fubo here, okay, there's some a very interesting question got asked. They were basically asking about advertising trends, okay? And this is where things get really interesting. I'll start with that. And so when we looked at our Q1 results, to your point, we came in about flat in ad revenue, okay? Now, ad revenue basically meaning, uh, you know, if you have, uh, if for Fubo, the company, right, they have all these different channels, and you have a certain amount of ad spots that Fubo can have on uh, each channel and, and a certain amount of a time slotted there, right? And so it's a great opportunity for companies like Fubo to make, you know, extra money on top of, obviously, just people paying uh, for the service, right? From a monthly perspective, let me just talk you through that, and then we'll go through 2Q in some of the categories. March was better than February, which was better than January, Okay, so we have a clear trend that is getting better and better for advertising for them. And I'd say, if I sort of give you some numbers around that, January was down slightly, February, call it flattish, and then March was up a bit. Maybe call it mid-singles, okay, so five-ish type percentage, okay? And then we're seeing further acceleration now into April and the second quarter. And so far in April, I think we finished up double digits. So encourage what we're seeing in terms of the trends. Would that, what, I mean, January, uh, you know, February is better than January. March was better than February. Uh, April is better than March. You have a clear trend that basically shows advertising is getting stronger and stronger and stronger, okay? Now, this matters for way more than Fubo. Obviously, this, this is great news for Fubo, and I hope this trend continues on for years and years, okay? But this is big for two other very important stocks in the stock market, okay? And those stocks are Google and Meta, okay? Don't be surprised if these companies, you know, as far as Meta specifically, they're going to destroy EPS estimates and net income this entire year, in my opinion. It's going to be incredible okay absolutely incredible and so that's why i don't think the momentum in meta is going to stop anytime soon outside of the whole market crashing or something crazy like that okay the momentum there's going to be ridiculous and i think google and meta could actually surprise on the revenue side as well as the year ticks on because i think the advertising market's coming back a little better uh, than folks maybe thought you know from what i see I think, um, you know, from what I see on YouTube, it looks like we've kind of bottomed out, at least in my opinion, in terms of uh, ad rates and those sorts of things. And it looks like things are starting, keyword is starting to get a little better in regards to that. I don't want to get too excited yet, but these are things to just kind of keep in mind out there, right? And you just sometimes do have to wonder, you know, if folks on Wall Street have access to some of these numbers before other people have access to them, right? Through different means and different ways of getting access to them. And, you know, wh why do these stocks keep moving up? Maybe they, you know, maybe there's a little something that's known out there. I'll just put it that way, okay?